church on Wednesdays and we get a lot of the residents that come through that use mobile market and they were nice. saying good things. Great, great. Yeah, hopefully next, next our plan is um, to continue it next summer from June until October, so. It's certainly going to be needed. Yep. I just wanted to jump in real quick to say a few things. One is that we're recording the meeting. Uh, so I've started recording it. And um, Chris, I made you a co-host because I've had connection issues. Um, and Ryan, your connection looks maybe about as stable as mine. So so I thought Chris would be safe. Yeah, I have not had issues with Zoom, but I'm going to knock on wood right now for that sake. But... OK. Okay. Ryan, Sweet. I'll make you co-host also, so just in case we lose anybody. Okay. Could we have the a copy of the agenda also posted? Um, yeah, we can put that up there. Um, why don't we get through the minutes first? Sure. <laughs> um, Chris, do you want to keep scrolling? Oh, that's all. Okay, so when it, somebody needs to make an emotion to approve the minutes. I make a motion. Uh, motion to approve. I'm <laughs> um, sorry, who is that? <laughs> Everybody? <laughs> I make a motion. Everybody. Okay, so Masood made the motion. Uh, and then we need a second. 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 <laughs> Uh, and then all in favor? Yeah. Um, I, I'm going to actually have to do a roll call. Sorry, I realized. So bear with me one second here. I'm going to do it by how I see you. So um, if you're in favor, just say yes um, to approve the minutes. So Masood? Yes. Chris? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Jada? Yes. And um, Dave, if you weren't there, you should probably abstain just because you weren't there. I shall Two abstain. Two minutes. OK, great. So we have uh, 401. All right, um, you're gonna have to give me a minute, but I can. You could at least start um, talking. But Ryan, I, I, we had checked in, and you said you would give um, an update on the mobile market. So you already started doing that. So, yeah, great. Um, so we just finished. So today was the last day. We actually, um, in lieu of a mobile market to Olympia Oaks, we were doing boxes in the last six weeks, um, just having boxes dropped off to people's houses. But um, our original plan was uh, for 12 weeks from late June to mid September. Um, and then everyone was pretty happy with it. So we tried to continue it for six extra weeks. Um, which it was the last day was the last day. Of. Um, and uh, a lot of that six extra weeks was kind of last minute decision making of just of just like continuing the 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 uh regular tent setup and and sales um at three of the sites at fort river butternut uh butternut apartments and um and uh east hadley road and then delivering boxes like i said the olympia oaks um and what did we have we we did, <laughs> did like ten thousand dollars in sales i think overall and about we donated about and, and that was like selling things for less than the usually less than the actual costs um and we did about ten thousand dollars worth of donations too in that time um from from grants that that we were given so a lot of some people were just getting free free shares and then um and then a lot of the money that we got a lot of the sales were done through snap and hip um, so people were getting reimbursed through the state uh, if they were paying with SNAP. Um, and we had gotten, uh, we had had CSA, we had, we had had HIP for CSA shares, but we didn't have it for just like 
kind of off the off the table shit off the table like purchasing like a la carte purchasing so midsummer or late summer we finally got um approved for our market sales for hip for reimbursement through hip so now we have that and we get to keep it so next year we'll be able to start off in june um and if for people who aren't familiar with hip um, is basically a state program it's called the health healthy incentives program um and it essentially when a customer when someone who has food stamps or snap makes a purchase <laughs> Um, they get automatically reimbursed when they when they use their SNAP to purchase food from farmers market, from like farm markets and such anywhere that's enrolled. Um, so it's it's a it's an incentive to buying fresh local produce from local farms. Um, so it's a huge huge boon for them, and it helps sell more food to customers that otherwise be able to afford it. <clears throat> Ryan, was there anything about like next year and a way that um, you all could, as a as a commission, could support the market more in some way? Or I just wondered if you had any thoughts about that based on this year. Yeah, there's um, anyone that wants to get involved. Uh, there's the mobile market planning committee meetings, um, and I have to look up when those when the next one is um when is the next one uh, and besides that um i guess you have to probably on zoom probably have to email caitlin marquee um in order to get on it um must be another one in November. Must be one in mid November, I think. I'm having trouble pulling up. Uh, so anyone that wants to get involved can email C Marquis. So C M A R Q U I S at collaborative.org. Um, if they want to, if they want to get more information about the meetings um, and. Uh, and we'll be meeting throughout the winter to figure out like fundraising and exact what what changes we make for next year, um, and uh, other ways to get involved or help. I don't know yet, but um, what we did this year worked out pretty well, and so we'll probably continue. I, I'm assuming we're going to continue as we did this year, um, with without too many huge changes. And the biggest thing is just like. Yeah, help getting, yeah, trying to, tr making sure people know about it, um, especially people who would benefit most from it. Um, and, but that, like, a lot, like, that's we got a lot of time before that needs to get going again. Are you thinking about expanding locations? Did you say that for next year? Um, I haven't given it too much thought. Um, I don't know yet. So yeah, and I haven't I haven't attended any of the planning committees since the spring, sadly. Um, but because uh, they're usually on days, they're usually on Thursdays when I'm been most been the most busy. Um, okay. So I don't know yet. We did get a oh, this is an update. We so through with Healthy Hampshire's help, we also got a, a big grant to buy a van um, for the use for the, for the for use by the mobile market. So there's also just like. So that that's that was a huge. We were using the my farm truck in a trailer before, and and that's like the the a vehicle the farm relies on heavily. So it was nice to nice to have a, a another vehicle that was more exclusive for use to the to the mobile market. Um, and right now, I'm actually trying to think of ways to use the van throughout the winter um, that would benefit people from the community. So I was trying to think of a way to like basically start lending it out to people who need it. Maybe if a car breaks down or if, if, if someone wants to make a trip to the grocery store to buy groceries for a few people, a few, few households. Um, yeah, maybe and, they uh, could organize like yeah. a van pool, like a certain, you know, um, every other week or something, they could do some kind of a, each complex could do a van pool to a grocery yeah. store. Yeah, um, cause like that's, that was something I saw in, so, uh, Caitlin's already, Caitlin at Hampshire, Healthy Hampshire's already starting to write up grants for next year. And 
one of the tidbits of information I, I remember seeing in her proposal was just like that Amherst has a very high percentage of people without vehicles. Um, yep. So uh, yeah, to make use of this van that, that we great, that we were lucky to get. Uh, and Dave, I know like you also work with some of the the um, soup kitchens, etc. Like if there's if 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 in if in your time there you find any use for a, a big cargo van, um, like there's there's basically many hands has one, um, and it's available for for use. That anything that helps feed people, we can make use make use of it. Appreciate the offer, Ryan. I think I may have some ideas to take you up on that. Great, great. Was there any talk about doing any kind of like even just once or twice during the winter to do a winter market? Um, not yet. It's and it's difficult to the logistics of that. Um, so one because like so ba I basically I'm tapped out on vegetables and I'm I'm going to other farms to resupply uh, for my winter share. Um, and the other one is just like the the inclement weather every like i'm like i'm really glad we stopped this week because like when it's 19 degrees on saturday I, like it'll, i can't imagine many people will be coming out in the morning um yeah. there's there's so many logistical hurdles i like i could imagine like packing boxes and such but it's um could work and and you know some kind of delivery but that's it's a bit of a logistical nightmare um yeah. And I, I kind of, I, I definitely personally need some time off, but again, that, that's something that like, <laughs> I'm, happy to, I'm happy to help uh, or time off. But um, yeah, if, if, if people start talking about it, I can definitely help with some of the like planning and logistics of it and make resources available. Yeah, I haven't heard anything and Lord knows you deserve time off. So it's been, it's just been nothing but great feedback um, about the mobile market this year. It's it's really amazing. It's really amazing. Yeah, it would be great to something happen in the winter, but uh, it's um, it's funny, like the the root vegetables, like they are definitely the least like already the things that are mostly available in the winter are the are the least popular for sales. Um, yep. So. Yeah, I don't know why. You know, I love to cook, and they just feel like there's so much work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's why people shy away from them. Um, so do you have anything else, uh, about the mobile market specifically? No, I don't think so. Yeah. It was a pretty successful year. Um, we had the added boon of getting that, that, that cargo van. It's like a 2018 Ford transit. So it's got plenty of room and, um, and it's a, and it's, we're looking for opportunities to use it this winter. If anyone has any, I, uh, need, um, and and then next year's like planning for next year is going to take get underway um, in November. So, um, I had sent everybody a link to uh, a uh, food policy meeting that happened today. I don't know if anyone was able to jump on or not. I know you're all still probably yeah. pretty busy right now. Phoned in from the greenhouse. It was awesome. Oh, great. Excellent. Oh, I'm so glad you were there. I had a horrible yeah, connection. Sure. And I'm sorry it was so last minute. I, um, I realized I should Perfect. have sent it out to you all last week. So I apologize, but glad you could make it, Jada. Do you want to maybe talk about that a little bit? Um, the part that I was a little bit late calling in, um, and it was a lot of Zoom logistics, um, the part that I heard, but um, it was it was talking a lot about like getting the, the group organized um, and going. I missed the first presentation again, so I can't speak to that. But um, it said, uh, I think the take home was that the, the governing circle was um, actively researching um, governing strategies and organizations to decide how best to um, organize the governance of the group moving forward. That was my take home. I don't know if you had a different um, takeaway from that. No, I um, I had such a horrible connection. I kept getting dropped from the meeting. So I, I at one point, I finally just gave up. 
Um, but it was too. And it seemed like you weren't had, alone in that. Yeah, they were having a lot of um, issues at the point where and I kept getting dropped. So mm -hmm. I was like right in the middle of their technical challenges. So I didn't hear a lot of content, mm. which is too bad. Um, but I think, you know, it seems like an opportunity where somebody, you know, and maybe, maybe Jada, if you have interest, maybe, I don't know how often they're going to meet, but maybe you could be some kind of a liaison to what's happening with that group to this commission. Cause there oh, yeah, be ways... I, I'm definitely excited to stay in touch. Oh, that's great. Cause then maybe there's a way that, you know, you can loop in efforts the way Ryan is working with the mobile market. Maybe there's things that this commission can do to sort of support that effort or you all can start brainstorming ways, uh, you know, maybe in the next meeting, more ideas will be coming forward. That'd be great. Yeah. So Ryan, I, I, I sort of feel like I've been stepping in as coming up with ideas, but this is really your meeting to chair. So I don't mean to be uh, no, leading no, things. No, no, no. Should we go on to the, should we go on to the next one? Does anyone have anything else to add? Oh, um, I had a couple questions about the mobile market, Ryan, if, that's, if yes. now is an okay time for that. Definitely. Um, so, Cool. Thank you. First of all, thank you so much for doing that. Um, that's really great and important. Um, secondly, um, so is there, was there like a limited funding for that? Is there still available money to keep something going? Are we done? No, we spent that. We spent all the money we had. Um, and there's like, we're applying for grant. Like, uh, we're already applying for grant for next year. Um, okay. And we, but we actually did the last six weeks without funding. Um, and oh, I'm wow. not sure, I'm not sure I, whether I lost money or made money on that yet. Um, okay. I, I, I probably, it, it was, it was, pro it was probably close to breaking even. Um, okay. And, uh, but it, and it definitely, but it, it definitely has to apply to you. For next year, we're looking to raise you know, twenty to thirty thousand um, dollars. I think is is the goal. And then there's, I've also heard from from somebody that I've worked with in the past that they got they're connected to a family trust that has that has money to donate, and that they're looking at the mobile market as a as a place to to donate to. So um, there's I think there's 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 good hope there. Um, and, and I think that something could even without, like, we'll run it, we'll try it, we'll run it for next year, even like, no matter what the funding is. Um, it's just a matter of like, do we do it as bare bones as possible? Do I, do I have one person kind of do, you know, working 20 hours a week or 25 hours a week doing everything? Or do you have a person doing 18 hours doing all the stuff behind the scenes and then having two or more people uh, or two people at each market, so either two people or, or you know, two different people at each market um, running each each one um, and kind of being more inclusive and having more going on. So it's, it's and uh, and whether we rely more on whether we whether we rely more on volunteer help or not, or or whether we continue to like, uh, basically, I was trying to be like the dollar store of organic vegetables. So um, most things are priced at a dollar unless they were like pretty big, um, or just generally more expensive, like really expensive. So, um, so that like that model of, of having things priced as low as they were would also change depending on the, on the funding. But I am confident that we could, we could have something in place next year, regardless of funding. Right. I'm just curious too about, um, the, the boxes, the box delivery that you were mentioning about um, in Olympia Oaks, uh, that yeah. might be a really nice resource to have, but I assume that it would require additional funding. Um, and I wondered if that was something that we would need to pursue or y'all would need to pursue um, to make that happen. Seems like yes, but regardless, I'm glad. Yeah, to, to, you're gonna to like make it happen in the future, you mean, or for next? Yeah, next, yeah. yeah. Well, um, the winter would be I ideal, but um, yeah, yeah. yeah, next season as well. Um, with that, it's it's 
it's also who yeah it also is like who could who would do it um, right and so it's it's um yeah it would be it would be it'd be like a little bit of funding um a little bit of of personnel and who's who's organizing it and who has time to organize it um and uh yeah and then and then the logistics of of making it happen throughout you know through no matter how much snow we get or what what have you um and how things get delivered because one of the one of the ways that it's worked at Olympia Oaks is we've got an amazing um, somebody we hired is like you know a few hours a week. Um, we hired people at each site to kind of help do various things, and and that different people did better. Some people did better. Some people did worse as far as, as, far as their involvement went. And we had one really rock star person at Olympia Oaks who was like willing to say, "Yeah, I'll take those twenty eight boxes, and I'll make sure they get to everyone's front door." Um, That's great. And so one of the one of the difficulties with continuing it in the winter is that like um, getting things to people while they're home because we can't uh, can't necessarily leave things on people's steps if it's below freezing out. And so that's one of the that's one of my hesitations for doing something in the winter because um, like I think a lot of the time we're just leaving things by people's door mm. while while they're out. Um, and so there's just been a yeah so so for me it's it's for not not wanting to continue something in the winter is is the um, uh, other, um and the logistics of that and like along with along with other money like issues of of personnel and and funding Can everyone still hear me? Cool, thanks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I'd be happy to see something happen in the winter, but like I said, the, the root vegetables, it's like even for simple seasons too, of like the my customer base kind of for the winter is about half of what it is for the summer. Um, and I find that people like people eating the, the root vegetables or not. It's not always like the things that people want as much as, as the fruit and, and greens. Um, and, uh, and so I'm not sure how, yeah, I'm not sure the weather, yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I, there's, there's so many difficulties with the winter with, a, with a, like continuing deliveries through the okay. winter that I, it's not something that I personally want to take on but I, I'd be willing if someone, someone else had wa wanted to, to step up and do something I would probably be happy to work with them yeah I just think like what you were saying about so many people in Amherst not having vehicles and the winter coming and COVID still being very real that, that might be something we're looking into but I absolutely understand dude take your take your time this is like yeah. absolutely not suggesting that you have to do all this yep, yep. but thank you for everything that you do. oh no problem yeah and it's and it's difficult you know because produce the, the produce that we're getting is is like yeah it is it is expensive um when we're buying organic like and so i don't know when you're buying organic local produce um and it's coming out of premium and that's what that's what a lot of the money that from the grant would would come from um like more or less basically we got we got we, got, we had like thirty thousand dollars to do it this summer and half of that was to or more than half of that was to labor um mm. and and a lot and, and like almost half of that labor was people in the fields um growing stuff so when we were so it's, and essentially, the grant was paying to grow the food to to sell at the market, um, and so and, and then and in addition to like money we spent on buying produce from other farms, um, which the like the the food the farm the money we were getting from our farm was much um, or the the produce we were getting from our farm we were able to sell at a much cheaper price than produce mm -hmm. we were getting at other farms, 
um, because we had that labor input. Yeah. Any other Um, be happy to update people about the, the, there's not as much to report on as far as the community garden goes. Um, we had, we only had two gardeners that I met that showed up to garden at, at Amethyst Brook. Um, I think at least one of them took over two plots and I, I think the second one might have also, I, I, I can't quite tell, um, or one and a half plots kind of. Um, and they had they had pretty decent looking gardens. Um, they seemed happy with it. Like I, I was un, wasn't able to be as involved with that as I had hoped to be um, with everything else that was going on. Uh, but it seems to work out okay. And then I was I have the the unused plots were cover crop this year, so they're in good shape for next year for anyone that wants to to garden for next year. Ryan, any any problems with irrigation? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, that was the, that was the I, I had a 200 gallon water tank. Um, and so people were, you know, in the past at that, at that locate at the other, the old community garden, people would have to go to the river with buckets um, to, to, to water their crops. Um, so I had about 100 feet away, I had a 200 gallon water tank that I'd fill up periodically from, from my irrigation pump. Um, and that was so they were so they were able to to use that which was you know difficult but uh but it wasn't but i think it was a, a slight improvement over what had been happening before yeah. any other questions mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I was getting, I've heard a few more, there's been some, some more interest in it, but um, I think like it, from the notes from before, I think there are more people that applied who I never ended up connecting with. Um, so a lot of people yeah. hadn't had expressed interest in like people that I know that I see weekly expressed interest, but they never ended up um, following through. So um, it's something that like, like with a lot of things, I think it might take time to develop the culture and, and get people well, and there was COVID this year too. Yeah, <laughs> that that sort of throws a wrench in everything. Yeah, although I, I um, Stephanie, I don't know if you've you've probably heard people grumbling about this, but there's 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 always I always hear a lot of anger from people about the mowing that happens um, late in summer at Amethyst Brook. Um, think it was like September or something and so there's a lot of there's a lot of families that I know who go out and, and collect um, monarch larva and and such and, um, and and a lot of people are like I guess there's I guess there's a specific time like their last hatching or whatever uh, or their last the, the last um, generation of, of butterflies that come out of their cocoons that are the ones that that travel south for the winter and that there's like a I guess I guess the town mows um, mows Amethyst Brook and all the milkweed that's there, like kind of at a at a sensitive time. Um, so I don't know if you've if you've gotten any complaints about that, but I've heard I've heard people express a lot of uh, grief over 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 that. Um, and I, it looked like some patches had been kept unmowed. Um, so so I, I was I was wondering if there was some some thought to keep some milkweed intact. Um, but I was wondering if, if it was possible yeah. to, um, to mow like, you know, to mow now wouldn't, would probably would cause no harm um, and ultimately have about the same effect. Uh, I can make a note. I mean, my guess is that if there's a patch of it that's left, then that's the intent is to like leave yeah. some of it um, and sort of try to meet dual purposes uh, mm -hmm. out there as best they can. But if, you know, I mean, I can, it's not my decision. I can just say, yeah. you know, this is some feedback and give it to the land management staff and they'll do with it what they will. Yeah. And if it, cause if, if um, cause I don't know if it makes any difference, but I figure they must be less busy like at this time of the year um, since so much less grass is growing and, and there's no snow yet, but like this might be a, 
if there's if, if there's no perceivable difference between mowing in September and mowing now, mm -hmm. might as well wait two months. Yep. Yeah, I mean, there may be reasons why they had things timed the way they did. I, I'm not aware, but um, this is at least feedback that I can share, so I will. Yeah, I think it, I think there was like a cleanup planned, and that's about when they mowed, which it, so they might have had it correlating to the cleanup. Um, yep. Okay. Great. Yeah, I made a note. Um, I think you have. We kind of skipped over the item about the announcements at the beginning. Oh yeah. What was the, uh, was it about the announcements? Whether anybody had anything to share? Okay. Anybody? <laughs> I don't have anything on my end, no. I mean. Well, I, and relating to the mobile market, um, uh, well, tying the mobile market and the community gardens together, there, there was somebody who I met through the mobile market um, who had been renting land in Northampton, who grows a lot of different Asian vegetables. She's, she's Cambodian and she, I guess she tries, she sells, tries to sell them around here, but also sells them up in New Hampshire. Um, she was being charged too much in Northampton. And she's, been, she's been looking for a parcel of land in Amherst that she could rent. And I was wondering if there was, and so the, I, like if the plans for the Fort River garden area had been solidified at all yet for next year. Um, they, well, yeah, we're, um, we're working on it. We've got, we talked to um, Sarah Bankert and uh, cause we're partnering with them to sort of do outreach to the community about it. So, um, we're working with Hope Gardener. Do you know Hope? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I forget who she works with, but she does a lot of um, community education around education things like community around gardens. Community gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were working with her and um, we don't have a plan quite yet, but um, yeah, what am I trying to say? So, she, so, um, there's no definitive plan, but I think um, that I know that particular woman, I believe, reached out to me a while ago, and mm -hmm. there was um, it was a pretty sizable area that they were interested in that was more yes. than just like a garden plot. So we couldn't just provide that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was tricky because their operation doesn't quite fall into like it's too big for a community garden plot and yet they also don't want to you know farm like a whole big parcel so I, you know I it was really hard to figure out where to put her but I don't know maybe you all um, you know maybe we can talk about it some more with Dave and try to figure something out because I know she came to us and I tried to help her as best I could um, do you know what size she was looking for was because I had heard ranges like she would deal she would deal with like 20 foot by 20 feet but she was looking for like a half an acre or an acre well that's what i was it, what i heard was like half an acre to an acre so that was and they never there was nothing ever proposed to me about like 20 feet it was all like half an acre to an acre and it's like that's more than we have available so for um you know for just a community garden plot it was obviously something bigger and she'd have to like i don't know They'd, we'd have to identify a parcel for her to farm. So right. if she wants to do a community garden plot, though, I mean, I'm sure there's yeah. a way we can we can accommodate that if it's just a 20 by 20. I mean, that might even be Amethyst Brook might even be, you know, available for that, right? So yeah, definitely. And was there? I don't know if this was my oh. idea that I just get stuck oh. on, or if there was any thought to this. Uh, <laughs> or if I'd heard it from somewhere else, but with the Fort River farm, because that's that fenced in area, was that three quarters of an acre? So that's about, um, yeah, it's more like half an acre. Well, half an acre, yeah. And yeah, um, and that's sort of transitioned to, um, 
at one point there was going to be like a sharing garden, but now it's going to be, um, and I know you had talked about maybe doing like half of it could be leased to a farmer and half of it could be plots, but I think now the whole thing is probably going to be plots and there could be some that are shared plots, you know, again, like a um, community sharing. And then there could also be some that are for families, some that are for groups. So um, I think we're trying to think a little more creatively about who uses those spaces and how they're designed. Mm -hmm. So um, we're about to follow up soon. So maybe um, we could report back out on that at the next meeting. Yeah, because if there was room for a, 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 like a big plot, maybe that could also, I, I might have space for her at, on one of my fields where I've kind of an awkward area that, that I, I don't get to manage very much. So I might be able to have her work there if it's large enough but um, yeah that would be yeah. that would be great um there was something about there was another challenge and i i don't have ever all the information right in front of me but there was another challenge about how they were setting it up that again it wasn't like easy for the town to just say oh here you know here's the space yeah, i think she this. wanted a greenhouse space too maybe that or, was it she wants a yeah. greenhouse because we can't just put a greenhouse up yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. So, yeah. So unfortunately there were just so many challenges with what she needs. It's so specific and we, mm -hmm. we just couldn't accommodate it. Um, so, I mean, if you, so, you know, if you or somebody else, you know, other, another farmer in town were, you know, had some space and were willing to maybe even lease it to her, you know, mm -hmm. inexpensively, maybe that might work. Yeah. But you all have those connections. I don't. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Um, so I don't. Uh, know. I, Glenroy, did you, oh, uh, Glenroy just came in. Says Glenroy, do you have any announcements you wanted to make? Uh, not really. Okay. Listening has been fun. Okay. <laughs> We're just happy to see you. Oh yeah, I'm glad I'm, I'm finally got this Zoom thing together. <laughs> yeah it takes a while and then yeah, even when you do it doesn't work <laughs> that is true all some of my my zoom would just drop right out drop right out mm -hmm. be able to connect um and yeah so we're uh are we through all the agenda items I think so. Do you want to talk about your next agenda or something you all might want to work on or maybe this food policy thing? I don't, I'm just throwing out ideas. Yeah. Does anyone want to add anything to the next agenda or have any ideas for the next meeting? No, no, I don't. Um, yeah, I and, guess. Oh. Uh, I had missed the previous email about uh, the policy council meeting, but that's definitely something that I think would be a good place to try to get involved or at least see what the potential type of involvement with them would be moving forwards. And how often do those meetings happen? Do you know, Stephanie? No, today was the first one. Um, and I got dropped before the end of the meeting. I, I finally had to get out. So Jada, did you stay till the end of it? I thought I did, but um, like I said, I was, I left, I called in from work and um, I feel like I got dropped right at the very, very end and I didn't reach when the next meeting was, unfortunately. So sorry, well, I can't I, help either. That's okay. I'm on the list. So, um, and Jada, I'm going to make sure that they have your email address and Chris, I can make sure they have yours too. I, Ryan, I know they have Thank yours. You. <laughs> but I can forward it to everyone as well. And you all can um, you all can reach out to Caitlin and let her know that you're all interested in getting information about the next meeting. So um, actually, why don't I do this? I'm just going to send her all of your email addresses unless anyone has an objection. And that way you'll get notifications about when the meetings are. Sound good? Awesome. Yeah, thank you.
And then I guess the question's raised, do we need uh, do we need to have a meeting next next month if we don't have um, if we don't know what if we don't have any items put on the agenda or is, or is that something maybe we can uh, stew and think about for the next three weeks or a couple of weeks and and decide decide the week before when so we need to post it. Yeah, I need to post it um, technically only 48 hours before the meeting, but usually our meetings are on Tuesdays, so I have to post it on Fridays, but better to post it on Thursdays yeah. before. So we'd have to have some idea before then. Yeah, and this meeting is really pretty late, so um, the, probably the next best time to meet at the early, the earliest time to meet would be December, the second Tuesday in, in December. Yeah, I mean, right now you're scheduled for November 9th, which that's only a few weeks away. So that seems too soon. So December meeting uh, would be December 14th, I think. No, I'm sorry, 15th. Uh, is it the 15th? No, sorry. Let me look again. But we could, um, yeah, so we could have a light plan to meet then, um, but uh, I guess it, oh, that would be conditional based on whether or not we have anything to discuss. So we'll, we'll just have to, if anyone has anything to discuss, make sure Stephanie uh, gets it for the agenda the Thursday, before, at least the Thursday before. Uh, yeah, so Chris, uh, so uh, Brian, just so you know that it's Tuesday, December 8th is when the next meeting is scheduled. So yeah. you all would need to, need to let me know, maybe good to make a decision by Wednesday, December 2nd. This you and I like could it. check in. Yep, sounds good. And my guess would be that there will be some kind of a food policy meeting in the month of November, I would think. So I will just make sure Caitlin has your information. And it could be that maybe if there is a meeting, you all want to follow up after that meeting to talk about it and to see how you could get involved. Yeah. And I, I guess thing, something to bring to if anyone has ideas or proposals to um, base off of this meeting that you think about like, ideas for how to continue like distributing food through the winter in some way like uh, or um, or also like how to get more people to sign up for community garden plots and to, and to actually use them um, so if anyone that would be two things to think about between now and then That sounds great. I'm writing it down too. Great. But as always, if anyone else has anything else they'd want to work on, um, that's also open for open for all that. Great. All right. And then unless other people have, if anyone has final thoughts, we can probably uh, sign off and and say goodbye. Say good night. Yeah. Okay. Nice meeting all of you. Bye. Right. Great Good seeing you all. Night, Take care. <laughs> Take care, everybody. You uh, well. Stephanie, I'll send you the yep. notes. Great. Thank you so much, Chris. No problem. All right. Take care, all. all right.